Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of SpinCast. Today, joining me is Tristan Leonard. He is the Assistant Director of, of Athletics um, and oversees the eSports program at Valparaiso University. So without further ado, Tristan, go ahead, introduce yourself. Tell me a little bit about your background, kind of how you got started in the eSports space um, and how you became um, the eSports program director um, at Val Valparaiso. All right. Well, it, first and foremost, thank you for, for having me on today. So, uh, like you said, my name is Tristan Leonard. I'm the, the director of recreational sports, assistant director of athletics, and then uh, kind of the director of esports within the last couple of years here at Valpo. And uh, my, my story started at Valpo 11 years ago. So I graduated from Valpo. I, I've been here ever since. Uh, and, and about three years ago, they, they looked at me as someone who played video games and we knew the uh, the programs and, and esports was growing in the United States and they said hey let, let's take a look at this so um, myself uh, a couple members of IT we went to a conference in the Midwest and by the time we got back we said hey we need to do this here at Valpo and so we pushed and pushed and pushed and uh, and, and it kind of grew and by the end of our summer of research and, and, and creating our space here on campus um, we were marketing, we were getting students, and, and we headed into fall with about five players. Uh, and I was like, well, we have a League of Legends team. Who knows how this is going to go? And uh, yeah, yeah. by the time our first year was over, uh, we ended up having about 62 students involved in some way, somehow. Um, this is our, our second full year, and obviously year two has been uh, a little different uh, as mm -hmm. we tried to deal with everything. Uh, but we still ended up having about 40, 45 students here on our rosters. Uh, going through all the different games, so it's just been a it's been a whirlwind, um, and and really it's I can't I can't say my students enough. You know they're the ones pushing us forward. Absolutely, it's awesome. I always love to see that student driven because you know at the end of the day, since esports is so new, you know there's usually a person like you that oversees everything. Um, but I was compared to traditional sports where you have kind of like your position as a director of athletics and then all the coaches underneath, right? And then even more coaches underneath them. Um, and, you know, esports just because it's so new isn't quite there yet, but excited to see it turning that way. But that's where the students come in. It's awesome to see so many students in so many different programs um, kind of take that initiative to keep growing esports, because that's all what we want to see at the end of the day is the continued yeah. growth of something we love so much in the esports industry. Um, but focusing um, on Valpo a little more, tell me what games you play, what competitions you compete in, um, that overall snapshot of the game specifics um, of your program. So, so we started with League of Legends, uh, and we still have a League of Legends team. Uh, we have Overwatch, Super Smash Bros, Rocket League, um, and then we're trying to get Magic the Gathering uh, Arena started, MTGA, but we haven't been able to find any seasons to go with that. Uh, we're starting to dabble a little bit into sim racing. Uh, we have a couple of students interested in iRacing and everything there, uh, but really those top four, Overwatch, Rocket League, League of Legends, uh, and Smash are our bread and butter. Uh, we compete in uh, NACE, National Association of Collegiate Esports, uh, and then this past fall we joined um, the New England Collegiate Conference, the NECC, and have awesome. been competing there as well. Uh, obviously, CELO, uh starts this weekend, so our lead team will be competing in Collegiate League of Legends. Uh, but for the most part, we stick with with NACE and the NECC. Uh, you know, we'll have random scrims here and there, uh, but we've really tried to stay within that collegiate space uh, for our program. Absolutely. That's awesome. Awesome to hear. I know NACC is growing very fast just from talking to everybody. Everyone seems to be catching on really fast, whether you're in that New England area or not. So super awesome there. Um, kind of looking um, at your program um, from a practice standpoint, a question I get a lot from the kids that are looking at collegiate esports to go um, and play collegiately. They're always like, hey, what is practice like? So take me through kind of a typical practice day for any of your games. Just pick one. Um, take me through what a typical practice day looks like and everything that's involved to give the high school students a better understanding of what that looks like from a more structured perspective um, at uh, the collegiate level. Yeah, and I think I, you, you kind of hit it on a few minutes ago and talking about just the structure, right? And, and one of the things we've tried to do here at Valpo is really structure it like athletics. Mm -hmm. And myself and the, the, the athletic director role of esports and then coaches and, and everything like that. And so, um, you know, our, our teams practice and, and compete much like traditional athletics teams where we have specific days of the week uh, depending on what it is. So we know our League of Legends team this coming semester is going to practice um, three days a week, you know, multiple hours each practice. Uh, and then generally we'll have a fourth day where it's either one-on-ones with the coach or a, a bot review. So, you know, whether it's, you know, actual practices, working on macro micro, um, you know, a video review of, you know, if we, if we have CELO on Saturday, a lot of times Mondays will be our video review, you know, so it's film review for our opponents, film review of who we're going to go up against. 
um, you know, working on drills. Uh, and then some of that is obviously just scrim time, you know, finding scrim blocks and when we can compete against other teams just to get that thing. So um, it, it really is just a full week of practice where we have some sort of film review, some sort of drilling, and then some sort of scrim uh, to get ourselves ready for, for game shape. Awesome. Awesome. Sounds great. Love to hear that uh, holistic approach, right? Kind of hitting all those different areas, macro, micro, and VOD review. Um, my next question is obviously you've experienced in the traditional um, side of athletics um, and then obviously on esports as well. Take me through kind of, you know, in your career, what similarities you've seen between the two where you think, you know, this idea might sync really well with both and also some differences, right? Because I've seen that, you know, esports, some of the things that work in traditional sports don't quite work with esports. So take me through kind of your general, um, you know, experience with that kind of similarity versus differences between the two. Yeah, I think. I, you know, I'm, I'm one of those that I would like to see sports more, more towards traditional athletics mm -hmm. in terms of, of, of scheduling and, and makeup and, and all that kind of things. And, and I, think, um, I think that's where we're headed. That's where it, it seems to be where the collegiate space is headed. You know, like with the NECC, you, uh, within the next week, we'll know who we're playing for the next 14 weeks, you know, so, mm -hmm. so that kind of scheduling is starting to come out there. Uh, I, I really just I continue to see that nice dynamic. I, I mean, the way our students um, kind of get used to it and, and go with that practice schedule and the game schedule and everything like that, this second year has been a lot more smooth. Um, you know, esports is still kind of in that wild, wild west phase in, in the collegiate. And so a lot of times when, um, you know, students come in or high school students come into a program or new students come into a program, they're not used to the, the practice schedules and, and the grind uh, that it takes to, uh, to, to compete and, and be a part of these teams. Um, and, and on top of that, you know, esports is still relatively new on campuses, and, and mm -hmm. so a lot of these students are in two, three other things. They're they're high end academically, and so just trying to find that balance and that blend um, between academics, between you know extracurriculars, and then esports on top of that is pretty tough. And so um, I think some of that is new for players coming in. Uh, you know, with with traditional sports, sometimes you have these student athletes coming in and they've played baseball for. 20 years, you know, esports is while we've, you know, I, I've played video games since I was, you know, eight, you know, I, I've never put in that, that dedication and time. So for people who go from um, just playing video games casually two or three times a week and then coming into to school and having to practice four days a week and have a fifth day of competition, uh, I think that's where sort of that athletics and esports, there's that disconnect. Now, mm -hmm. High schools, you know, bring that up, you know, there are even here in Northwest Indiana, you know, there are countless high schools that I can just stop by and check out practice. So, so you know, the, those high school programs that are now bringing players in, um, those players are used to it. So, so you know, yeah. whereas two years ago when I talked to students, it, it was kind of that, that touchy area. But I think that's one of the main disconnects that I see. Yeah, absolutely. Totally agree there. It's, I think, you know, a question for those younger generations to start to get more involved, right? And that's, you know, exactly kind of what we're doing at SPIN of getting those high school students, you know, more involved and more structured, right? Because there's so much like, hey, I'm just going to hop on and play, you know, rank tonight, right? And then kind of do what I want. I'll stop when I want, rather than having a dedicated team that stays the same. Because um, on that note, I always say that, you know, there's a lot of players that like always look for greener pastures instead of trying to make their pasture greener. Um, right. So when you go to college, like you're stuck there, you know, you're there for four years, especially if you're on a scholarship. And then all of a sudden it's like, if you don't like a teammate, you have to like kind of amend those differences, right. Or get to the bottom of it. Um, it's not just like, Hey, yeah, I'm done. I'm just going to leave the other way. Um, so totally agree with you on a number of those things. Um, but you do bring up an interesting point in there, um, in recruiting, right. From these local high schools. So take me through what you look for in a recruit, right. What stands out as, you know, more important than some other things, um, when you go into your recruiting season to fill those gaps as, you know, seniors graduate. Yeah. And for us, one of the questions I get, you know, scholarship, scholarship, scholarships. Mm -hmm. and, and for Valpo, you know, we're, we're a non-scholarship program and um, Valpo is really high on academics and, and we have great academic based aid, uh, but we don't have esports specific scholarships. So my recruiting method, you know, when I'm going in to look at high schools or I'm talking and um, I feel like I've spent half of my fall semester on, on Google meets with recruits, but uh, it, it really has to do with communication. You know, and, and a lot of that is what it breaks down to, you know, um, I, I have players send me rank and, and what's your team rank. And, and, and our big thing with a lot of our teams, we play well above our rank, you know, and, and so we're looking for good communicators and good teammates. Uh, and you kind of hit it right on the head, you know, a lot of players solo queue up or, or jump into rank randomly. Um, and that's just a completely different play style. And, and so, you know, we're, we're looking for the, those, those communicators and those people can be great teammates because we want those people on our team. You know, we could be a, an all silver team, 
uh, and still compete with Diamond just because we play as one. And so, yeah. uh, you know, the background on all of our computers in our lab, it says Valpo Esports, we not me. And so just having that team mentality um, as we go into things is, is honestly one of the things we're looking for. Absolutely. Because I mean, there, at the end of the day, there's nothing more beautiful than having an entire team on the same page, right? Perfectly synced, you know, whether that's on a communication standpoint in the game or outside the game, um, it, it yields so much more potential for growth, right? So if you get players, and like you said, are, you know, maybe a little more lower rated than the, the really good ones, right? Maybe a gold, maybe a silver versus a diamond, right? At the same time, you have them for three, four years, right? So like if they're very well communicators and great teammates, then like you can turn that team into like an incredibly high level team. They'll probably even be better than those diamonds because they don't have that solo mentality and they're there to make the team better rather than themselves. So totally, totally agree um, on all of that. Um, a few last questions here before we wrap up. Um, looking towards the future of collegiate esports, um, I know we you know hit on a few of these topics um, in a, a micro scale, but what would you like to see either change or be created for collegiate esports or stay the same um, that would really bring collegiate esports to the next level? Because like you said, you know there's, there's missing some structure there just a little bit um, from a macro perspective, right? From the leagues, there's like you know a thousand different leagues that you can compete in. Um, but take me through kind of your general idea of, you know, what does collegiate esports look like in three or five years um, to kind of bring it from where it is now? Super awesome, but not quite, you know, college football where you hear about it every single day and see all of that. So, you know, what does that transition look like for you? I, I think for me, it's two big things. And one is obviously, and we're not even going to touch on like NCAA esports and all that kind of stuff, but, you know, some sort of, uh, you know, where we can just, hey, we're in this conference and that's what we're playing for, you know, some sort of conference championship structure. So that'd be really cool to see mm -hmm. uh, as, as we go that realm. The biggest thing for me, and this is something that my students right now are, are struggling with, is I want to see it move towards traditional athletics with an actual off season. And, and I think with, with, with my students, it's been trying to protect the mental side of things. Uh, with esports, with video gaming, we're used to doing it 24-7, 365 days a year, because that's what we love to do. We love to play video games. Um, but when we're going to practice so many days a week and competing, there's a lot more of a mental toll than just playing video games, you know, during the summer. Um, I, I'd love to see there be some sort of off season, you know, and, and allow players to decompress and, and truly do something, you know, compete hard for a full semester, uh, and take a semester off, just like we see in traditional athletics. You know, sometimes we, you know, basketball will bridge semesters, but there may be October to March, you know, football plays, you know, six months. And personally, for, for the mental welfare of, of students and, and coaches, uh, you know, I'd love to see some sort of offseason just where players can, can go hard and then kind of take a step back. And, and, uh, and right now we're not there. You know, we're competing uh, 10, 10 months out of the year. Um, yeah. but, but I'd like to see a good one. Yeah, absolutely. That's um, that's so important and so overlooked because people always see like, oh, well, you know, it's esports, it's video games. So they can just play, 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 play because that's what, you know, everyone normally does anyway, whether you play competitively or just casually, you know, you usually play a decent bit. But it's that mental toll that you're talking about that I've seen so much and players that have come through our program or collegiate programs that I follow of like, you know, you play for six months at that high competitive level. And all of a sudden, like the game's not that fun, right? It's just like, wow, this is monotonous. This is work, right? Rather than kind of having that inspiration. It's still going to be work no matter what. If you want to be good at anything, it's going to be work. But, you know, there's that line between, okay, I want to play and get better and make my team better versus like I have to play, right? And, you know, with traditional sports, it's really easy. Like, hey, you can't play a full year because like your body will die, right? Uh, you know, but it's the same thing. It's like whether it's physical or mental. I totally agree. It's like that mental kind of wear and tear. That's why you see so many pros kind of drop out after four years. It's because all of a sudden it's like, wow, I just can't do this anymore because I don't want to, right? Uh, end of the day, if you wake up every day not wanting to do something that you have to do, you're probably going to quit that sooner than later, to say the least. Um, one last question here before we uh, run out of time is. Um, looking at the, the global scale uh, for all esports, regardless, collegiate, professional, high school, amateur, whatever, same kind of question I just asked, what is the next step to get it to become the world sport, right? Obviously, esports is so massive, still hasn't quite hit the NFL or global soccer, um, but, you know, what might be that defining factor that you could see a change coming um, in the next five years that really bring esports to where it could be, where I think it should be as that, like, global competition? I I don't that's a tough one. Uh, um, you know, I, there were, yeah, I was, I was a big fan of the 2K League when it came yeah. up. I thought when the 2K League did that, um, you know, I, I thought that might be that, that little push. 
Mm -hmm. um, obviously, Twitch is helping, you know, with all the various games and, and their esports. I'm, I'm still one of the one of the few playing uh, PUBG right now, you know. So I'm I'm in tune to to the big global things there. But I mean, there were there were rumors that there could be esports going into that uh, the Olympic realm. And, and I think honestly, if it gets to that stage, that's where we'll start to see more acceptance. Um, yeah. I, I think collegiate, we're starting to see it take off, and, and especially here in in America, you're you're starting to see that a little bit with different colleges pick it up. And obviously collegiate sports are massive. So that will be something here uh, that'll help it take off. But I don't, I don't know. I, I think, it, you know, if we, obviously if it hits that Olympic stage, we'll start to see a little more acceptance there too. Yeah, absolutely. The, like once anything makes it to the Olympics, it's, you know, the next big thing, right. To say the least. So totally agree on that. Unfortunately, we are out of time here. Tristan, thank you so much for sitting down with me at SpinCast today and telling us a little bit more about Valparaiso and the esports program you have there. Sounds awesome. Definitely a great program. Everyone watching should definitely check it out, to say the least. Um, real quick, if you will, Tristan, plug yourself, plug your program. Tell us where we can find y'all on, whether it's Twitter, any social media platform, website, et cetera, anything you want to plug. Yeah, for sure. Uh, just Valpo, uh, Valpo Esports, or actually, sorry, Twitter's, Twitter's a little different when we were signing up. Esports Valpo on Twitter, uh, Valpo Esports on Twitch, and then just valpo.edu backslash esports. Uh, you know, that's where you can find us. Uh, if you're interested in applying to Valpo, you can just put your interest form through our website and um, you and I, yeah, it will set up a time to talk. Awesome. Awesome. Everyone, I definitely encourage you to do that, to say the least. Um, to all our viewers and listeners, thanks for staying the entire time. Um, stay healthy and stay happy out there. Obviously, COVID is still a thing. I can't wait for it to go away so we can get our lands back, please. <laughs> uh, but stay healthy, stay happy, and ultimately, stay plugged in. <laughs>